All right, class is back, Slaughter University. Let's get to it. Good to see y'all again. I am loving the fact that y'all are here tonight. Y'all could be doing anything on Thursday, but you chose to sit here and listen to me run my mouth about the Lord. But hey, you came to hear him, not me. So let me get straight into it. So I've been dibbling dabbling in Matthew for um, about a while now. I kind of showed y'all before like how I like to read the Bible, you know, start with Job, then the gospel, the New Testament, then go to the Old Testament, all that shebang. But we're going to take it slow tonight. I'm sorry. It's Friday. Forgive me. Y'all definitely could be anywhere tonight on Friday. Lord, see, when you're not working, your days just run into each other. But I'm always working on behalf of the Lord. So thank you for telling me that, sis. So what's on the heart of the Lord to share through me tonight is a particular section in Matthew that I really didn't feel like I could find anything in that. But as I kept trying to read, the Lord put you guys on my heart. He said, no, Chris, I need you to stay right here. But he also said, Chris, I need you to stop being afraid to go deep in my word and go deep with the people that are coming to the live and re-watching this on YouTube or listening to it on podcast. And I say, Lord, you are right. I have been terrified to go deep because I mean, I don't even want to say nothing wrong. I'm still learning so much myself. And I be like, Lord, I just don't want to say nothing wrong. And I, I, I used to talk about the things that I most related to through my experience. And the Lord told me, he said, whatever I put on your mouth to say, it don't matter what you've been through. It don't matter what experience you have. I'm speaking, not you. I said, okay, let me, let me shut up then. You know what I'm saying? And he showed me just in the passage I was on in this chapter, he said, now watch me pull something out of here for you. And I said, Lord, Father God, have your way. As you guys know, I read from AMP version, but I'm in Matthew 15. And I'm going to read this, but I got to break it down to you step by step. But first, I'm going to just read the entire passage. So we Matthew 15, 21 through 28. A lot of you already know what this story is. The story is about the lady that came to Jesus to heal her daughter from a demon. Um, but let's just get into it. Uh, and I'm, again, I'm reading from AMP. So, hey, whatever verse you read from, that's on you. So, it says, after leaving there, Jesus withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon, and a Canaanite woman from that district came out and began to cry out urgently, saying, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David, Messiah. My daughter is cruelly possessed by a demon. But he did not say a word in answer to her. And his disciples came and asked him repeatedly, send her away because she keeps shouting out after us. He answered, I was commissioned by God and sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and began to kneel down before him saying, Lord, help me. And he replied, it is not good, appropriate and fair to take the children's bread and throw it to the pet dogs. She said, yes, Lord, but even the pet dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their young master's table. Then Jesus asked her, woman, your faith, your personal trust and confidence in my power is great. It will be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed from that moment. The title of today's part of this class is called The Children's Table. And I really hope y'all stick around. And if you can't, you can always catch it on YouTube whenever you feel like hearing my voice. It's called The Children's Table. But even though I read that, so much God showed me, so much God want me to show you guys right now. I started at verse 21, but I meant 22. So I'm going to start at 22. And it said, And a Canaanite woman from that district came out and began to cry out urgently, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David, Messiah. 
My daughter is cruelly possessed by a demon. Let me give y'all some history right quick. This is why reading the word of God in context is so key. So, this is a Canaanite woman, right? A Canaanite woman. For those who don't know, Canaanites were the ones inhabiting the land of Canaan before God brought Israel over there to conquer it back in their heyday. What's up, Ralph? Glad to see you here tonight, my brother. So, a Canaanite woman, these are known enemies of Israel. They hate Israel. You know what I mean? You came in, God took their home from them and everything. They hate Israel. They've been beefing since Fast and Furious 4. You know what I'm saying? They've just been beefing. The reason why God is so intentional, because you got to understand the context of who's talking, who came to seek the Lord. See, it's easy for me to say, yeah, Snoop Dogg pulled up on Young Thug. You'll be like, okay. So this guy pulled up on Young Thug. But the dynamic changes when I say the Crip Snoop Dogg pulled up on the blood Young Thug. See, now you got context. See, now you see this ain't a regular pull up. This is somebody who's in a rival gang pulling up on a rival gang member asking him for something. So it's important to understand you know, these people and, and where they at and where they come from and, you know, this, that, and the third. So, a Canaanite woman heard about what Jesus was doing amongst Israel. He heard, she heard that and she said, I gotta go. I gotta go see what this man talking about. Let me tell you something. This woman is from a, a nationality, a tribe, or whatever, a clan that hates the Israelites and vice versa. But yet, she wanted to seek out Jesus so much that she went to a place full of people that she hated to seek out a man that was considered an Israelite that she hated because the help she needed mattered more. I just want to stop and dissect that for a minute. You know, the scripture says, seek me while I can be found. You go to the scriptures where it say he wasn't in the fire, he wasn't in the whirlwinds. What was the story? Seek Jesus and you will find him, right? That's, that's what the scriptures say. But what if Jesus is not where you want him to be? First, let me just like this is a Canaanite woman. What if Jesus wasn't in the house? What if Jesus was in the apartment? Right? See, see, I gotta make it relatable to 2023. Feel me? What if Jesus wasn't in the house you want? What if he was in the apartment? What if he wasn't in Miami? What if he wasn't in Atlanta? What if he was in Albany, Georgia? Right? But see, when you when you looking for God, when you seeking God, you can't seek God where you want him to be at. You have to go to where he's at. You have to go to where God's at. See, you want to move to Atlanta, but what if he's in Lithonia? What if he's in Stone Mountain? What if he's in Duluth, Georgia? What if he's in Rome, Georgia? See, you might want to move to Miami, but what if he's in West Palm Beach? Or what if he's in Belleville, Florida, some places you never heard of? What if he's in Tallahassee? How bad do you want to find Jesus? And see, sometimes as believers, we feel like I have the Holy Spirit. Uh, so that means God is wherever I go. That's not true. God is with you. But that doesn't mean he's a part of the plans that you made. See, a lot of us are seeking God to do things in our life or we're seeking a certain type of healing, a certain type of breakthrough, uh, a certain type of answer, but we're only looking for the answer in the place where we want the answer to be. See, I'm looking for a job and I can sit there and say, oh man, that looks good. Sign on bonus, yearly salary, commission, great. And what if God said, but I'm not, I'm not there. 
right? See, when I first decided to get into sales, um, the first thing me and my wife thought of was the car business, right? The first thing we thought of was the car business. So we go to the car business and we find out Jesus ain't there. Yeah, Jesus is, 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 is in sales, but Jesus not in car sales. How many of you are willing to allow God to take you where he is and not where you want him to be? I'm glad you made it, sis. The Canaanite woman went to Israel, went to where he was at, the, the, the person of the nation that she despised, to seek healing for her daughter. Right? One thing I noticed about that, that verse right there is that her daughter was possessed cruelly by a demon. Meaning that this wasn't no regular demon. This wasn't no try to throw you in the fire, throw you in the water. No, no, this was a cruel demon. This was a cruel demon that this, this, this girl was possessed by. And you know what I thought about? God knows how to get your attention. But when God is trying to get your attention, do you try to fix the problem? Or do you take the problem to the problem fixer? And see, I love how God used the lady's daughter. See, you got to understand the word says that nobody comes to the father unless he calls him. <laughs> Meaning you just, this lady didn't just get up in her flesh and say, I'm going to go find Jesus because he healing everybody. No, I'm pretty sure everything in that woman's flesh said, Israel don't mess with me and I don't mess with Israel. I ain't going over there. But see, affliction fell upon her daughter to the point where it's like, okay, it ain't about me no more. Let me get my daughter to somebody that can get some healing. Because I'm hearing that he's healing the blind, he's healing the sick, he's doing this, he's casting out demons. This girl got a demon. I'm finna take her over there. Let me bring it to 2023. A lot of y'all got family members that y'all been praying for. But instead of trying to show them to Jesus, you've been trying to be Jesus. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yes, Lord. Instead of trying to show them to Jesus, you trying to be Jesus. Can I get a guilty? I know I'm guilty. I know I'm very guilty. Every time I had a friend or a family member that had a problem, I tried to be the Messiah in their life. I try to help them. Let me give you a plain example. How long are you gonna keep answering these cash out requests for people that you know not stewarding their money well? Hey man, I'm not saying you can't help nobody, but look, every time they need something, you write that cha-ching, whatever the cash out sound make, and you send them money. Maybe it's time to get them a book on finances. Maybe it's time to ask them, hey, bro, what are you doing with your money? You got a job, but you always ain't got it. But yet you know that they live in a lifestyle outside of their budget. Maybe it's time to have a real conversation with people and point them to Jesus who shows us how to probably steward all things because all things come from him. A lot of us don't want to admit that and you ain't got to admit that, but it's the truth. It is the very much honest to God truth. God used the Canaanite woman's daughter. She was possessed by a demon. He used that situation to draw her unto himself. And we're going to talk about faith tonight, man. But we're going to talk about faith in a, in a different light, from different perspectives. And I really want y'all to understand this tonight. Stick on. So, she took her daughter to Jesus, right? Verse 23 says, but he didn't say a word in answer to her. And his disciples came and asked him repeatedly, send her away 
because she keeps shouting at us. Let's bring it back. Hold on. Shouting at us. She said, Lord, son of David, the Messiah, my God. I'm talking to Jesus. Can we just take a minute? Because this really speaks to the believers. Can we just take a minute to be honest? Has it ever been a time in your life where you was talking to somebody else and then somebody else jumped in trying to tell the person you talk to how they honor you? Hold on. Talking to Jesus. But see, I'm glad how it was the disciples because this is what we needed to see as believers. Sometimes you walk in with Jesus so close that you think you are the one. Jesus can answer for himself. Let me bring it, let me let me bring it around for you. Let me make it plain. You ain't been to church in two months. God ain't gonna do nothing for you. Oh, you still shacking up with Craig. God ain't finna do nothing for you. Oh, you still doing this. God ain't. When did we become the gatekeepers of heaven? By no way, shape, form am I saying that God condones sin. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is God knows the person better than we do. And whatever that person has going on, it is not for us to say what God may do. It is for you to shut up and be an example and keep following Christ. Stop gatekeeping. Stop telling people what God will and won't do. Because the Bible says the sun rises on the righteous and the unrighteous. It rises on the righteous and the unrighteous. Because let me tell you something. I got some friends that believe in Christ, that trust God as their Lord and Savior. Do I read my Bible more than them? I do. Do I go to church more than them? I do. Do I pray more than them? I know I do. But these folk that don't, God gave them a house before I did. God gave them a car before I did, before, before I got one. They got a house, they got a car, they got a family. But wait a minute, I'm praying every day. I'm reading every day. I'm following Christ every day. Lord, this person's still doing this and this person's still doing that. I would be wrong to try to answer for God and say, God ain't going to do nothing for you. God ain't going to allow you to get a house just so you can have Ray Ray over there. Do he want Ray Ray over there? No. But you are not the sovereign God of the universe. Stop trying to make sense of what he's doing. Because it might be something that that house is a stage for. Right? For a breakthrough that he might be trying to do in that person's life. See, see, stop worrying about how God is going to break them away from it. Just point them to the person that's going to break them away from it. And in this verse, it really struck me. Because when the lady was crying out to him in verse 23, it says, God didn't say a word to her. God didn't say nothing to her. Apparently, she kept shouting so much that the disciples were like, look, man, can you, can you tell Charlotte to go home? Because she keep calling it us. What happened after that? And it was after the disciples made that comment, Jesus answered. And he answered, and he said, I was commissioned by God, and I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Right? See, you got to understand, when it comes to God, it's all about your faith, baby. He wants your faith, baby. And we're going to get some more into that, but understand, God wants your faith, baby. Let me tell you what the what Holy Spirit revealed to me when he said that. She called out of God, God didn't say nothing. The disciples told God to send her away because she was getting on their nerves. Then God answered her and said, well... I was commissioned by God and sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Let me say this. In no shape, form, or fashion am I saying that God is ignoring your prayers. No. God heard your prayers. He heard your shouts the first time. 
Sometimes he just want to know if you just going to keep shouting. How deep is your faith? How much do you believe that he can do what he can do? Ooh, I'm, 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 I feel like I'm going to veer off. Let me, let me stay where I'm at. When Jesus responded with his question, I thought, and God told him, he said, God may not have answered your prayers because you kept praying, but he might have responded to your prayers because of the people that was praying against you. Ha, 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 ha. See, sometimes when God is silent, we're thinking that God is not hearing us. God wants to know how much faith do you have that I can do this? See, you got to understand diviners, uh, uh, sorcerers, wizards and witches, all that stuff was there back then. All of that stuff was there back then. But when God didn't ask her, she didn't get up and say, you know what? Maybe there's somebody else that can do it. She didn't do that. She said, no, my healing is here. My daughter, healing is here. <laughs> the one who's going to deliver her is right here. That's the one that's going to do it. You are the one that's going to do it. What she showed was undoubtedly faith that there was nowhere else she can go. She, see, 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 now for this. I don't want to box you out. You know what I'm saying? Because y'all get me tight. If God told you the job was yours, why are you still on Indeed? If God told you the house was yours, why are you still on Zillow? If God told you that he was going to do it, why are you looking everywhere else? Why? He said he was going to do it. But see, this is what we do. We pray to God till we're tired. And when God don't answer, okay, God ain't going to do it that way. Let me go find another way to do it. Maybe I need to go back to and ask my boss for my old job. Because the rent is coming up. And I ain't found no job yet. I saw a job I wanted and I prayed for and they ain't hit me back yet. I know God and showed me that this was the job for me. But because it's not happening when I want it to happen, let me go back or let me find another way. You get impatient. When the whole time the Lord is like, I want to see how much you believe that I can do it. I know I can do it. God's like, I know I can do it. I can do it today, tomorrow. I can do it yesterday. I can do it while you sleep. I can do it while you up. I can do it while you eat. I can do it while you're on the toilet. But see, we got this thing where we feel like we have to prove to God how much faith we have. When Jesus is trying to prove to you how much faith you have, he knows how much faith you have. He knows how much faith you have. But see, you don't know how much faith you have until you're in a situation where you have to be faithful. Because see, in that moment, when she waited on Jesus to heal and cast out the demon out of her daughter, I bet you the next time she needed faith, she remembered the last time she had it. We give up too soon and we give up too early. But yet we're claiming that we trust that God is going to do it. And like I said, silent doesn't mean he didn't hear you. God heard her shouting out perfectly. He heard her shouting out perfectly. But he didn't respond until the disciples tried to convince him to send her away. God's silence doesn't mean he's not going to respond. But thank God that you have a God that responds to you even when people are praying against you. Even when somebody trying to get you sent out the job, get you sent out the place, get you sent out. See, you don't, like, what's the saying favor ain't fair? You don't get to, to grasp the, the infinite things of God. People are going to look at your life and be like, how did she get that with a 500 credit score? 
Not saying God is pleased with your 500 crystal. I'm just saying. Favor ain't fair. I would rather have a bank of faith than a bank of money. God has done things so much in people's lives and all it took was faith. Here we go. After God said that, and, and I, you know, people like to take this, uh, uh, people like to take this scripture and just make it seem like God was trying to call the girl a B word, you know, because he said, throw it to dogs. Now, let me break this down for you. You know, God said he came to the lost, the, the, the uh, he was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and began to kneel down before him saying, Lord, help me. I don't care what you're talking about. All that house of Israel, all that stuff like that, I'm here. I'm here, Lord. Help me. Let me tell you something. For us Bible bullies and us Christians who think that we are holier than thou, how, I, how God showed me this is the Canaanite woman being somebody who know of Jesus but ain't came to Jesus yet. But see, people know who you are. Oh yeah, that's, that's Brandon who sell drugs and that's shot from the club and that's somebody else that's doing whatever. They don't come to church. They don't do this. You shouldn't mess with her. Don't let her back in here. You know what I'm saying? Don't, 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 don't do it. But let me tell you how great a faith this Canaanite woman was. Whether she met Jesus or not, who knows? From my understanding, this was her first encounter with Jesus. She's coming off the she's coming off what she heard a lot of people saying about what he can do. Let me tell you how great her faith was. It's right there in the first verse. She said, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David, the Messiah. She called out to him in verse 25 and said, Lord, help me. She had already accepted Jesus as her Lord before she got there. She already submitted herself to Christ before she got there. See, she called him Lord. She didn't say teacher. She didn't say person who's doing this. She said, Lord, help me. My faith got me here. You can't abandon me. My faith got me here. I'm yours by faith. Hear what he say. He said, he replied, it is not good or appropriate or fair to take the children's bread and throw it to the pet dogs. All together, what he's saying is, I was sent for the house of Israel to draw them back to me. Right? That's, that's what I was here for. To draw Israel back to me. Would it be right for me to take my time to help you? You know what she said? She said, yes, Lord. Meaning, you're right. But, Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their young master's table. Jesus told him, he said, woman, your faith, your personal trust and confidence in my power is great. It will be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed from that torment. Understand something. She said that even the dogs, the unbelievers, even the unbelievers eat the crumbs that fall from the young master's table, the children's table. See, this is what we got to understand about God. Not one place in the Bible God refers to us as my teenager, my, 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 my oldest. We're always his children. So if the crumbs is falling from our table and the dogs are eating the crumbs that fall from our table, remember where the bread coming from. See, a lot of us start to think that, that, that we got the right. 
that we got the Italian and herb, that we got the, the, the sweet bread, and we got the French bread. No, 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 no. Understand something. The bread comes from God. And the crumbs that we drop, the seeds that we plant, is what the dogs, the Gentiles eat up. Because guess what? How long are you going to keep eating crumbs before you want to taste the bread? See, the crumbs that we drop, they keep eating the crumbs. Okay, I'm getting the crumb, but this ain't enough. I want the bread. I want to see that at the table. I want to sit at the table. See, that's why you got to stop trying to be Jesus and plant those seeds. But the reason why I titled this message The Children's Table is because you keep kicking people away from the table. You won't let people come sit at the table. You won't let them near the table to get the crumbs that you drop. To see your self-control. To see your long suffering, to see the love that that uh, covers a multitude of sins, that's the crumbs. You don't ever want to testify about what God has done in your life. You want the credit and the glory in all of it. Let's put a quick pen in it. I'm gonna need some water. Y'all got me yelling. I ain't even thirty minutes in. But I love y'all though. Earlier before God gave me this message, I asked God. Remind me, put a pin in this verse right We're going to come back in a minute. God, I said, Lord, how can I, how can I, how can I phrase you how I phrase to God? I said, Lord, how does somebody really give you the credit? I said, Lord, you got people that work, and I'm one of them. I'm one of them. Like you say, Lord, give me the glory, but sometimes it's like, Lord, but I went to work. How can I say, Lord, thank you for paying my rent? Did I not go to work? Lord, I worked 40 hours, 50 hours a week, 80, 90 hours every two weeks. I mean, didn't I not just get what I put in? and use it to pay my bills? Lord, how do you get the credit for my rent being paid, right? And I said, Lord, how do I explain that to somebody that don't understand? He said, you got that job because of me. I gave you the strength to go to that job. I stopped that Nissan Maximum from ripping the grill off the front of your car. Oh, why I deserve the glory when you finally get to your desired body type? The same body, yada, yada, yada that you've been wanting? I'm the one that didn't let that dumbbell fall on your face and break your nose and scatter your skull. When you was overworking yourself, I stopped your body from collapsing on you. That's why God deserves the glory in all that we do. Because literally our bodies cannot move unless God says move. Period. When God showed me that, when God told me that, that's when I was led here. Because we talk about faith, but we 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 also want to talk about works. Right? I'm going now. We're gonna talk about faith and we're gonna talk about works. But before I get there, I gotta hit the head on the, the nail on the head one more time. God gives us the bread and what we eat and the crumbs we drop, that is what the non-believers see. They get a taste of the bread, the crumbs. It's all to lead them to Jesus. We have to stop kicking people away from the table. But understand, it said the dogs eat the breadcrumbs that fall. Meaning there has to be some type of separation between you and a dog, right? 
See, I can't speak for other households because I done seen some stuff. But in the black household, dogs aren't allowed in the kitchen. Right? But every now and again, you might throw a piece of piece of bone over there. You know what I'm saying? You 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 might throw some 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 little food and drop it so the dog can come eat it. That's how we do in the black community, right? Dogs you don't eat at the table. In some communities, I done seen a dog in a high chair, but we're gonna leave that where it's at. What works in your house works in your house. I just won't be eating it. Now, even though the dog is not at the table, the dog is still in proximity to receive something from the table. So how do you handle the non-believers? How do you handle the Gentiles? See, some of you are letting the dogs sit at the table with you. You have to have some type of separation. Meaning, it has to be some type of separation between what God's children do and what the rest of the world do. See, God's children move in a certain way that shows that Christ is in us. But yet we are still in a vicinity with people that don't believe the same things that we believe in. Meaning that when we having a team meeting and then the manager finally walk out the room and everybody start talking about how this some BS, I ain't coming back from break on time. I ain't doing all this. The problem you drop is rules are rules. If that's what the boss man say, that's what we do because the boss man ain't your boss. God is your boss. Because remember what I just said. God is the one that gave you that job. That's a breadcrumb. Let me tell you something about drama. Since I'm, since I'm on that. You can be too close to drama and still get associated in drama. I remember this time when I was young. I grew up in Fourth Ward in Atlanta. Right? Grew up in Fourth Ward. We kids. One of my partner's brother was a big time crip, right? Big time crip. I'm with, and his little brother is our age. We in school, you know what I'm saying, whatever. And see, times was different back in the 90s, early 2000s. You know, kids, kids, kids man, we used to be outside. I, I wouldn't do that today, but we was outside back in the day. So, when you have, a, when you in a rival game, Yo, 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 when you're in the game, your rival game make their business to know everything about you and your family. You are up. Think about it. When you can't get to your up, where's mama stay? Where's sister stay? Where's grandma stay? Right? We walking across Boulevard on our way to the library. These dudes drove by in a purple minivan. I remember like it was yesterday. <sighs> Swan the door open. Bop, 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 bop. Start shooting at us. The bullet was this close from my foot. I saw the blood. It's like I had a shining gun or something. I saw the bullet hit the ground and bounce the other way. And I turned around and ran back to the house. We kids. We in our elementary school. Going to middle school probably. That was nothing but God. But they wasn't shooting at me because I did something. I was in close proximity of the person that they wanted to hit. See, sometimes you're too close to the fight. See, when you're too close to a fight and a fight break out, they don't know if you're on their side or the other one, so everybody get hit. A lot of you rock too close with the non-believers. Not saying don't love them. But you have to also understand a boundary. They can go to the places you go. But you can't go to the places they go. They can and they can chime in in the conversations that you have. But you can't chime in in the conversations they have. You have to establish that boundary to say, hey, what I do is good. You can rock with me on this. But what you do is bad. I can't rock with you on this. And it got to stop taking up for it. Well, well, Chris, I don't get it. I don't understand uh, why you can't call me the club crucial on the, on the Monday, the magic on the Monday. Some of us will say things like, I don't want to. Or, 
when I gave my life to Christ, I aligned my morals with his morals. And that is not a part of God's uh, standard for my life. So that's why I can't go with you. But see, what I'm finna do is go to the escape room with some other friends of mine. You, you, you more than glad to come. Notice something about a table. I feel you, Holy Spirit. Slap myself. I feel you, Holy Spirit. It said the breadcrumbs fall from the young master's table, meaning the children's table. Usually when people are at a table, it's more than one person. Not saying you can't sit at the table by yourself. I'm just saying, let's be smart. Sometimes at the table, it's at children, it's plural. Table, our table. That goes to show me that the dogs are around. I hate saying that, but the dogs are around a multitude of us. But in our faith, you got certain friends you only let hang around certain friends. See, your Christian friend, I hate that term, but your Christian friends, you don't bring around your world of friends, your world of friends, you don't bring around your Christian friends. You think that you just Switzerland over here and you know how to keep it. No. Why not bring your worldly friends around your Christian friends? You know why? Because you two different people. See, when you in Britain from church, you talk different, you dress different, you look different, you pray different. But see, when you with Keisha, you're a whole different person. See, the world don't know you as a believer in Christ. They know you believe Christ. Oh, my God. I'm going to drink some water on that. Because y'all not here with me tonight. I could have stayed on the game. Mm, 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 mm. Luckily, I'm here. For the Lord. See, your, your friends don't know you. See, they know two different, they know, they know two different Ashleys. They know the see, you got Ashley that go to church. You got Ashley Monday through Saturday. I bet you won't throw a cookout. I bet you won't throw a cookout and invite your church family and friends and your own family and friends. You wouldn't know what person you wouldn't know what personality to show up. Because see, on the Uno table with the church family, you one way. Sorry, sister. Draw four. But see, on the space table, you got a black and mild in your mouth, a cup of uh, crown, apple. You cussing and you throwing them cards down so fast they gonna pop up and cut somebody's neck like you his soaker from Hunter X Hunter. I'm just being real. You throwing them cards like uh, he's soaking from Hunter X Hunter. I'm so serious. But 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 when you hear, you up. Uh, Lord forgive me. Draw two. Ah, uh, I'm sorry, sis. I'm gonna pray about it. Corny self. Corny corn. Corny hen. Full of corn. Corn beef hash? You ain't the same person. You ain't the same person. You like uh 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 Lizzie McGuire. You saying one thing, but in your head, you doing another. I'm just keeping it in about 50. I'm just keeping it in about 50. When you need to be the same person in front of the pastor that you are in front of your friends. Why not invite your worldly friend over here? You love to invite them to church because they expect you to act a certain way in church. You over there, oh, Lord, thank you for my steps. You my savior. Lord, you are the best. And when your friend come to church, you just over there. No, in the way, you be running around that sanctuary every Sunday. Oh, y'all fake. Oh, y'all fake. Y'all fake. 
You invite your friend to church, you don't even walk past anybody else because you don't want to be too different. Hey, 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 yeah, we got to go. You don't walk around the church and, and, and introduce them to everybody because you're fake. You're fake. You're fake. I'm sorry. You're fake. I was fake at one point, too. Because I felt like the church people was more people that I had to prove something to. Why am I trying to prove something to somebody that believes in Christ? Why am I trying to be anything other than who I am? And I snapped out of that real quickly. Pastor, first lady, deacon, elder, usher. You hop on this spade table with me, I'm on you. I'll make you want to uh, uh, excommunicate me from the church. And you better not renege. Just being real. Let the pastor hop on the spade table with me. Ain't no way. This my, this my youth leader. You doing right. Get on my table. Elder. Just being real. Because we try to villainize things that are innocent. And when I go and I play cards with my worldly friends, they cuss, I'm not cussing. I dare one of you. When last time you told somebody, can you not cuss in front of me? This world has fallen so low that we are so comfortable being uncomfortable. Because everything about the Christian faith offends everybody else, but nobody can stand up and say that what you're saying offends me. Like my pastor told me last Sunday. Maybe, maybe I don't want to hear about what you did last night. Maybe I don't want to hear about you and the new girl. Maybe that was the old me. But how am I guard on my ears and my eyes? We so quick to throw Instagram over there and Facebook. Oh, I gotta guard my ears and my eyes. But hop on the phone with the world and get full. Come on now. I'm just being, I'm just, man, look, I'm just being real. It is, it is, it is so crazy how we try to divide the two. But is that not being lukewarm? I mean, I'm, I, I hate it in a way, but is that not being lukewarm? I'm just being real. Ain't, ain't, ain't it being lukewarm? Then God say, I will spew you out of my mouth. Either be to the left or be to the right. But that being in the middle, I ain't with that. And that's why you don't allow the non-believers to come to your table because you don't want them to see how you are when you're not around them because you're so afraid of being judged you're so afraid of of what the world gonna think about you you are so afraid of losing friends you are so afraid of losing family right you 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 so afraid of losing people Oh, you don't want nobody to look at you differently. And sometimes, you know what? I think y'all don't even care about people looking at you differently. You don't want to lose your relatability. Oh, let me drink some water. Yeah, because we always talking about, oh, we're afraid of losing friends. That's not it. That's not it. You're not afraid of losing friends. You're afraid of losing your relatability. You don't want to be the one that everybody like, ah, oh, here come JD. Always got something from songs with something we doing. Because you're still trying to be accepted. You're still trying to be accepted by the Lord. Y'all can hear Bad now making her videos. She's so cute. Go follow her.
He's so cute. I can't tell me. But anyways, that's not the point. You so afraid of losing people because you don't want people to be like, oh man, he always talking about God. God, 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 God. I'm so tired of JD talking about God. JD, all you talk about is God. But ain't nobody trying to hear that. Oh Lord, not here come the nun. Oh Jesus. But do you know how much greater reward you're going to receive in heaven because you did not conform to the ways of the world? But yet you opened up your table and said, hey, and I think the table is just a distinction. God's children have a higher platform than the people that's not. But yet God is still calling them to himself by allowing the breadcrumbs to be dropped. Those are the breadcrumbs. Let me get back into my message. We talk about faith and works. And one of the things we love to misconstrue, but I am here today on behalf of the Lord. He chose to use me. He could have used my Nike flip-flops. And they not even Nike. I'm sorry, I lied. These are champions. They're champion flip-flops. He could have used those to talk to y'all tonight, but he decided to use... Uh, Rich a person like myself, so I'm gonna say it. Before I tell y'all faith and works, I'm just gonna read the uh the verse to y'all. And then I'm gonna come back to what the lady did. So I'm gonna come to you from the book of James. Y'all be running from the book of James. It's only five chapters. Let me tell you. Let me tell you something about the book of James. Alright? Let me tell you something about the book of James. Read the book of James if you want to. I dare you. I trip a dog dare you. Read the book of James if you want to. Because the book of James comes for everything that you're doing right now. Every, every single thing. It talks about your mouth, your anger. It talks about all of that. It comes for you. Man, let me tell you. Read that book of James. Read that book of James. Real quick, verse 14. What is the benefit of what is the benefit, my fellow believers? If someone claims to have faith but has no good works as evidence, can that kind of faith save him? No, a mere claim of faith is not sufficient. Genuine faith produces good works. And in verse 18, I didn't even highlight it, but thank you God for locking my eyes to it. He said, but someone may say, you claim to have faith and I have good works. Show me your alleged faith without showing, well, show me your alleged faith without the works if you can. And I will show you my faith by my works. That is by what I do. What did the Canaanite woman do? She didn't sit in her house and say, I believe that Jesus can cast his demon out. No, he, she grabbed her daughter with the demon inside and said, come on. We're going to see Jesus. And we're going to get this demon out of you. That's what we're going to do. Her faith produced good works. She just didn't say Jesus can believe. She took the work. She did the work of going to Jesus. So when, when you are having faith in something, you produce good works. Let me tell you, I, I know God is going to deliver me on a good job so much. I have faith that I'm going to get that job, right? I started making plans. I start making plans. All right, Lord, when you bless me with this job, I'm going go to I'm gonna go to the gym here. I'm going to go to the gym there. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. You know what? I start, I start producing good works by my faith. I start setting up bank accounts. My direct deposit is going to go here. My like the gym. Hold on. Let me, hold on. I 
brought the word gym up. Let me tell you something. That's a perfect example of faith in works. Right? See, you trying to work for that body, yada, yada, yada. Yada, yada, yada. You keep saying you want your back to get smaller. But see, you have to understand the gym is not how you got big in a bad way. The, the, the gym ain't how you gained 100 pounds. It's your eating habits of how you gain 100 pounds. You still blaming the pandemic and we almost four years out of it. I'm just, I'm just being real. See, see, they say I'm cooking, so let me go on, let me go on and prep the onions, cause I'm, I'm trying not to cook. The gym didn't get you fat. It's what you ate that got you fat. It's what you keep eating while you got two chin. And instead of just saying, "Lord, I'm out of weight, I need to get my body," you want to say, "Oh, it's big boy season." Okay, keep lying to yourself. You didn't go in the gym and start eating dumbbells. But yet you're trying to work in the gym. Like the gym was the reason you... No. The gym is the tool that God gave you to help you lose what you put in your body. That's the work. The faith is, I have faith in what I'm doing in the gym, so I'm going to continue to eat right because I actually believe that the work that I'm putting in in the gym is working. Regardless if I see it or not. Jesus Christ, I'm about to throw... Ah! I'm about to... Ah! Yeah! Ah! Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. Oh my God, faith and works, it go hand in hand, baby. It go hand in hand. You just start going in that gym and eating bench press machines. So all you doing is thinking, oh, if I just go to the gym and, and do the, no, 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 no. Let me tell you something, my father picked up weight. My father walked for 30 minutes a day for six months. He stopped eating red meat and started eating right, eating less portions. And for six months, for six months, he went for a walk for 30 minutes or more. And my father dropped all that weight. Because guess what? You, you, you darn it pretty much exercise. You walk, you know, walk on your break, you do something. I'm, I'm just saying. But see, the faith is, I believe, because see, when you go to the gym, I don't even look in the mirror no more. What's the point? You just did 20 reps and you feel like you finna look in the mirror. Like you just, like you just finna be that guy. No, no, let me tell you something. Even the scale, even the scale cannot truly show you your progress. Like the mirror. But the thing is, I can hear you. I'm proud of you. Yeah, I can hear you too, though. You in the living room? Yeah, I'm in the living room. I kind of hear you. Oh, I can hear you all. Yeah, I think we're going to kind of cross into the videos a little bit. Yeah, I heard you on my video, too. Yeah. All right. Keep up the good work. Thank you. All right. I'm, 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 I'm about tired of them, so I'm going to wrap this up. They what? Not they not listening. They ain't listening. But let me, let me finish. What it say? A prophet was not by respect uh, in his own town, baby. Hallelujah. It's okay. All right. I'll listen to I'm you. still recording, boo. Oh. Just right. check for me. Because baby, the people on YouTube will listen. Because yeah. I'm about done. <laughs> All right. Can you close? Y'all better listen to my man. Don't worry. They ain't listening. You want me and my man, my man? All right, boo. Love you. I'll see you in a minute. Keep up with guys. So your girl Sanjanique, aka Neek Neek, has partnered up with Slaughter University to bless us with some custom merch. If you want some Slaughter University merch or just want some custom merch in general, hit her up and her business be unique. Promo code in the description. Back.
Back to y'all. Because you thought I was done with you. It's not the gym. Because the, the, the scale, I'm sorry, the scale, you can go to the gym and it may say for two months. And you and you measuring yourself by the scale. Because the scale is measuring the weight. Right? But see, the, the mirror, it is actually showing you that the measurement's a lie. You might went from 260 to 250, but I can see it all in your face that what you're doing is working. See, don't judge yourself by the scale. What I judge myself by is my waistline. See, I went from wearing a 44. Then I got into a 42. Then I got into a 38. And I'm like, hold on, Jesus, hold on. Hold on, a 38. I ain't wore a 38 since the moon landing. And there never was a moon landing, so guess what? I never wore a 38, right? Then I got down to a 36. And see, that's when you get scared. Because the gold start happening. Oh, the goals start happening. See, God start telling you to make content, and then you go from 10 followers to 1,000. You cool with that? 1,000 to 10,000. Oh, that's nothing. 10,000 to 40,000. Wait a minute. Then when you start going from 100,000 to a million, now you're scared. Now you're ready to quit. Now you're ready to back out. Let me tell you the difference between when you're actually working towards something and you start trying to measure yourself. Because see, the thing is, you want the numbers to reflect the progress. Oh, that reminds me of David. When the devil tempted him to count Israel, got in trouble with God because, see, David was winning all those wars. He didn't know how many people he had. But see, Satan tempted David to count the number of people. And God was like, hold on, because now you think you're doing this, and I'm the one that's doing this. I'm gonna be real. I'm about, I'm about, I'm about, I'm about 290, 280, 290 around them. Some of you got dudes that got bellies. They about 250. Do you know an NFL linebacker? The average weight for him is 250. But what's the difference? When he take those pads off, he don't look like the dude you laying up to. He's not flubber. He's not. He's not big. He's not got three chins. Because if the scale mattered, then we all be going by the scale. See, it's the progress. But see, you keep looking in the mirror, waiting on the progress. When the progress don't come, it's not working. See, when you look in the mirror and you put in faith you going to the gym every single day and two weeks done went by you feel like it ain't worth it working just like we do with Jesus or oh, it ain't working so I guess I might as well just go to cookout and get a cookout tray cheddar style chicken sandwich fries a wrap what kind of drink you want let me get an Oreo shake extra Oreos that was my order I tell them myself. Matter of fact, let me get a cookout dog all the way on the side. But you done worked out four times this week. Let me tell you, when I had my personal trainer back in Atlanta, I love her so damn. She like my mama. I love her so damn. Love her so much. Um, one of her other clients was working out on the same day. His name is Felix. Love Felix to death. Felix, very nice guy. Very cool. Very respectful. My trainer can tell that I was eating stuff I wasn't supposed to be eating because I'd come in and bloat it. And she'll ask me and be like, Chris, what did you eat today? Before I even step in the gym, she'll be looking at me from, from, from the steps. Like, mm. And I see her shaking her head at me by the time I'm getting out the car. And she coming in, she already got all the weights on the floor. I'm like, Mom, what's wrong? She was like, what you ate today? I said, okay, I had a bag of chips at work. She said, boy, what are you doing? And Felix told me one of the, uh, one of my uh, my brother clients, because we was like a family, 
He said, Chris, I'm going to be real with you, man. You work too hard to be eating like that. He said, you come here every day and you work hard. You motivate us. We saw you go from 276 pounds to 236 pounds. You work too hard to be doing yourself like that. But see, when you don't see the progress you want, you quit. And you keep running back. You saying that the chicken and the broccoli ain't working. Oh, I'm tired of eating the same thing. Tough titty. Get over it. Believe it or not, no matter what nobody say, you didn't gain that weight overnight. And see, that's what the enemy wants to tell you. Because by the time you realize you had gotten bigger, it's like you just gain consciousness in like six months later. Dang, I'm getting kind of big. Because think about it. When you eating like you eat it and you start picking up weight, you don't realize that you have picked up weight right off the bat. What usually happens is you go to your family member house that ain't got no filter and she'll say, dang, you getting fat, girl. Well, you getting kind of chunky. And that's when it hits you. Oh, wow. Did I pick up weight? But see, just before you walked in the house, you thought that you was the same size. And then when somebody told you that you was getting big, oh, you realized it. So now you think you just got big in seconds because you just realized you done got big. No, you been getting big over the last couple of months. So it's going to take some time. And I'm not trying to be your motivational trainer. I'm not trying to do nothing. I'm talking about faith and works. What's the point of going to the gym? Just to go home and eat trash. And you know, I went to the gym today. Yay me. No London tipping. But I went to I went to the gym today. And I had a choice. I texted my wife. I said, I'm gonna stop by Walmart. And I was gonna get me a veggie stofus from Walmart. I don't know what it is about them stofus that just be having me all in a chokehold. But I love that vegetable stuff was from Walmart. Man, I tell you the truth. I could probably eat one of them things myself. But you know, we get the family side. So I was like, I'm gonna get one of them. And as I'm walking to my car, Jesus said, no. No, you don't. Hey, if you wanna try that vegetable stuff from, uh, that is the vegetable lasagna stuff. It's not bad for you, but it ain't nothing I should be eating after a workout when I'm trying to lose weight. So by all means, if you fit and friendly, go ahead, try it. Tell me what you think. If you didn't like it, you didn't hear from me. So, as I walked to my car, Holy Spirit said, no. No, you're not. Go home. Right? And after my workout, I came home, and you know what I did? I took a shower. And I sat down on my living room floor. I don't know why. I, yes, I have a couch. But sometimes I just like sitting on the floor for some reason. And I cut on anime. And I ate watermelon. I ate watermelon. I ate watermelon. And then later on for my meal, I had brown rice and zucchini. And shredded chicken. That I had made a couple days ago. I thought I was going to have to make some fish. They didn't have to do that. It was right there in the refrigerator. I was like, oh my God. Let me tell you something. Ain't nothing like finding some leftovers in your refrigerator when you don't feel like cooking. Jesus. Lord. Holy, holy, holy. When you open up that fridge, you realize you got some leftovers in there that you had made. And you were like, oh, I ain't got to cook. Jesus. Won't he do it? That's just being one thing. Okay, but I didn't say, because no matter what I did in the gym, don't matter if I go home and I counteract it. So that's how the faith that works. So let me say it like this. You've been in your word. You've been praying. You've been fasting. You have been working so hard on your spiritual growth to end your week in pornography.
You have been working too hard on your spiritual growth to end your night in fornication. You have worked so hard on your spiritual growth. You have waited and prayed so long for your spouse to get caught up in adultery. You have waited on God to deliver your husband to you for so long for you to go be with a married person. You don't think God going to deliver so you're going to go jump in somebody else's business. Somebody else. You have worked so hard. And just like this Canaanite woman that kept shouting out to the Lord, even when he responded, she said, Lord, help me. Okay? Because see, sometimes when the Lord responds to you, it's not to dish you. We want to, he want to know if you're going to keep going. See, see, God trip you up so good sometimes with questions. Because you think that when he finally say something to you, and it ain't the answer that you want to hear, a lot of us quit. How many of you are holding on to the blessings that the Lord has promised you? Because he asked you a rhetor- he, asked, he, he, he answered your question with a question. Is it lawful for me? Is it? Is it lawful for me? Not lawful, I'm sorry. He said, it is not good or appropriate or fair to take the children's bread and throw it to the pet dogs. That comment could have easily offended her and she could have turned around. But when you know where your blessing coming from, you're not easily offended. When you know where your blessing is coming from, you're not easily offended. So when God calls you to a place and say, this is the place where I'm going to exalt you. This is the place where I'm going to bless you. This is the place where I'm going to get my glory out of you. You're not so easily offended on that job no more. Uh-uh, go on somewhere with that because God called me here. God called me here. He called me here. I don't care if you try to say corporate fit and do some cuts. It ain't going to be me because he called me here. I don't care if, if I only got five people and God told me to start a church. He called me here. He said, this is where my blessing is going to come from. Jesus said he's going to bless me here. I don't care about what you're talking about. Because you ain't talking about nothing. You ain't talking about nothing on nothing on nothing. Not a bat. Nothing at all. God said my blessing is coming here. My source is God. God is my source. I am going where God is. If God said that I don't I want you to leave your land and want you to go over there, I'm over there. That's where I'm going. You ain't talking about nothing. Nothing at all. But we so easily offended. God, you want me to start a church in my basement? God, you want me to start a, a ministry on TikTok? This ain't what I thought. Lord, you gave me the gift. Why do I have to start at the bottom? Lord, you gave me the gift of comedic talent. Why am I open enough for people that I'm... Why am I opening up for people I'm funnier than? Oh, Lord, why am I working for people I manage better than? Lord, why am I not the one teaching this class? Why, Lord? And you get offended because God called you to a certain place. But you never understood how his plan was to exalt you. Say what you want to say. But God came down wrapped in the flesh, born in a stable, born in a manger. Come on now. Born in a manger, in a small town. God was called to a cross. Jesus was called to a cross to suffer a humiliating death. But yet was glorified because of his obedience. Do you want 
what you want or do you want what Jesus wants for you? Because you think going to school and getting your degree and getting a job paying $80,000 a year is going to be pleasing unto the Lord. No, that's what you want to do. What if God says college is not in my plans for your life? What if he said that? What if he said this isn't in my plan for your life? What if he said maybe one day? We get so easily offended. But this lady did not let Jesus respond. Stop her. Because this lady said, because I have faith, I call you Lord. She knew she had a right to be healed. Bump all the other stuff. She knew she had a right to be healed. Like, not only did you come to Israel, your enemy nation, to seek out the Messiah, to heal your daughter, but it also seemed futile all for a second. But her response is what God was looking for. Not that he didn't know that she wasn't going to say what she said. But after that moment, that woman knew she had faith. She knew she had faith. God already knew she had. He called her to him. He called her to himself. And then he healed her daughter in that moment from the demon. Some of you are letting go of the rope too fast. Because God says you cannot please him but by your faith. It's only by your faith that you can please the Lord. And some of you be holding on to the rope, you pray consistently, then you just give up. You stop praying. But 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 says, pray without ceasing. Meaning don't stop praying for it. You're not bugging God. You're not bugging God. You reminding God that he's the only one that can do it. She didn't get cocky. Because she had faith. No, she said, I ain't leaving him till this demon is out my daughter. Not because I'm a dog, but it's because of my faith that I now have a seat at this table. Don't believe me? Don't believe me? I got scripture. I got scripture. Oh, how I love scripture. Galatians 3. Hmm. Galatians 3. I'm going to read down nine verses. Oh, you foolish and thoughtless and superficial Galatians. Who has bewitched you that you would act like this? To whom, right before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified in the gospel message. This is all I want to ask of you. Did you receive the Holy Spirit as a result of obeying the requirements of the law? Or was it the result of hearing the message of salvation and with faith believing it? Are you so foolish and senseless, having begun your new life by faith with the Spirit? Are you now being perfected and reaching spiritual maturity by the flesh? That is, by your own works and efforts to keep the law, right? So have you suffered so many things and experienced so much all for nothing if indeed it was all for nothing? So then does he who supplies you with his marvelous Holy Spirit and works miracles among you do it as a result of the works of the law which you perform or because you believe confidently in the message which you heard with faith. Stay tuned. Verse 6. 
just as Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness, as conformity to God's will and purpose, so it is with you also. So understand that it is the people who live by faith with confidence in the power and goodness of God who are the true sons of Abraham. The scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith proclaimed the good news of the Savior to Abraham in advance with his promise saying, in you shall all the nations be blessed. So then those who are people of faith, whether Jew or Gentile, are blessed and favored by God and are declared free of the guilt of sin and its penalty and placed in right standing with him along with Abraham, the believer. Let me tell you something. It says right here in scripture that that question that God threw out to her was a trick question. Because he said, wait a minute. Let me go on for you Hebrew Israelites out there. Oh yeah, for all y'all out there that like to yell at people and stuff like that. Yell, read these scriptures because y'all don't like reading the whole scriptures. Y'all don't like reading the whole scriptures. So read them scriptures. When he said to her, it is not good, appropriate, or fair to take the children's bread and throw it to the pet dogs. But wait a minute, in Galatians it said that it was already foretold to Abraham that those who believe by faith matter you Jew or Gentile, that's why you will be considered Abraham's son. There's even one scripture that said that Paul said that he could raise sons for Abraham from the rocks. God wants your faith. God wants your faith. So that means that this woman who don't even know the scriptures didn't even have the law of the prophets she had faith that if she just believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, that she would be saved. That her daughter would be saved. Notice, she didn't come to Jesus and say, can I be your child? Can you be my Lord? No, she came to him and saying, Lord, help me. Because I have faith, Lord, you are my Lord. It ain't no way around. Because you have faith, because I have faith, you are my Lord. Meaning I have a seat at the table because of my faith. Nobody could have revealed that to her but the Spirit of God. When God drew her into himself, she knew, you're my Lord, here's my faith, I'm showing you my work, you got to do it. Because of the crumbs that your children dropped, I no longer want the crumbs, I want the bread. Forget what money bag you're talking about, you the bread loaf. Jesus is the bread loaf. You have to have faith. But understand, it is your faith that produces good works. Stop trying to have works by faith. It's faith by works. You can't say, Lord, I'm praying for a husband. And I said this time and time and time again. Oh, I'm praying for a spouse. But you locked in your house like Princess Fiona. Amazon is a billion dollar company. Maybe trillion by now. They is not finna deliver you a six foot four chocolate man to your house. Amazon is not finna deliver a five, six pretty brown eyes, hourglass figure wife to your house. The funny thing is, some of you probably already got that six fold or that tall, dark, handsome, cut man. He just ain't lost the weight yet. Oh my God. What did you just say, Chris? I'm going to say it again. See, some of you found the man. But because he didn't look like the package you prayed for, you said this package wasn't the one I prayed for. 
God sent you a man to test by fruits, but because it didn't look like how you thought it was going to look like. See, hold on. I'm not saying that you can't find a man that's already fit and friendly. I ain't saying that. You could. But does that fit and friendly man want to be kept? See, y'all keep trying to keep a man. Tell us, oh, you got to do this. You got to do that. You got to do this. No, you can't keep a man that don't want to be kept. I don't care what you do. I don't care how much you spend. I don't care how many times you go down. I don't care what you do. You can't keep a man that don't want to be kept. And that's the reality that men don't want to tell y'all. Y'all keep trying to keep men that don't want to be kept. Y'all keep trying to keep women that don't want to be kept. Can't nobody keep nobody that don't want to be kept. If a person want to go, they going to go. And that's the truth. You can be grade A. You can be the worst of the worst. A person going to stay if they want to stay. Period. Jesus don't even make you stay. But you think you can make somebody else stay? Shut up. Shut up. See, you met a nice guy. And I'm speaking because I am a guy that's been looked over a lot of times. But I'm secure. Now, I'm, I'm married now to the baddest, to the finest. So I'm not, I don't care no more. But it's so, it's so real. You might have wanted a guy with a six pack. You definitely could have had that. But what if God didn't give you a man with a six pack? What if he gave you the man with a desire to have one? Uh oh. Uh oh. Cause see, yeah, some people are naturally fit. Some people are naturally, they got it. But guess what? Y'all get married, start having kids, and they better start becoming a little big. They better start becoming a little wide. It won't fit. You know what I'm saying? Little bit belly. Get sluggish. Start having kids. So many times have I seen men let themselves go when they start having kids. Get married. Getting comfortable. It happens to the best of us. I'm not judging. I'm just saying. But what if God said because you know you want your man to be appealing to you. What if he gave you the man that had everything but the body? But what if this man said, you know what? I have been wanting to get in the gym my whole life. Let me tell you, I've seen so many transformation videos. You will be surprised at what weight loss can make a person go from a 6 to a 10. A 1 to an 8. I'm just being real. Some of you guys, y'all, y'all frown upon thicker women. But what if she had the desire to get her body back? What if she just been insecure? Got a little scratch marks. Now she, now she, now she just. But what? But what if you loving her the way she was was a motivation for her to be better? What if you accepted her for what she was and the woman she, uh, God gave you? What if she just wanted to be better for you? Thank you, sis. You can be the push that that person needed. Because sometimes it's not that people don't want to do it for themselves. Sometimes people just need the motivation to do it for themselves. Because this is the hook, right? This is the hook they go on the worm, they go on the lake, they catch the fish. This is the hook. How can I break this down to you? I know how I'm going to break it down to you because the Lord is going to break it down to you. So listen up. A person don't mind doing it for themselves, right? They don't mind doing that. They don't mind, they don't mind going to the gym doing it for themselves. But what does it matter? What does it matter if that person don't have the motivation to keep going? For somebody to believe in them. Maybe they just need somebody to believe in them. Just to believe that they can accomplish the goals that they set out. What if they wanted to get their teeth fixed? But they were just so insecure and depressed about it, they never put forth their effort. What if somebody came and just loved them where they was at? You don't think people know their teeth cricket? Oh man, here we go. It's, it's, it's 
teeth getting too real. You think people don't see their teeth every morning? You don't think people see that teeth that's doing the east side stomp and the other one that's doing the lean with the rock with it every morning? But you talk about that person. You join that person. All the time. But what if somebody just found somebody to love them where they at? They say, I see you got a chip tooth, but I love your smile. That probably would be the motivation for that person to say, finally, somebody loved me where I was at. That makes me want to do better. Hmm. Sound like this way you need to understand how God feels about you. He is the only one that truly loves you where you at. But it don't mean you're going to stay there. But see, God is not going to make you change the forms of his ways. When you begin to love God for who he is and appreciate him for loving you when nobody else did, you become better for him. And he says, guess what? It's not your works that you become better. My spirit is going to help you carry out the things that makes me happy. Because see, God can make you happy. But without God's spirit, you can't make him happy. Oh, my Lord. You trying to work to make God happy in your own flesh. You trying to keep every stroke of the law. Because you so stuck on performance-based love. You are so stuck on thinking that you have to fulfill all the law. But yet the one that fulfilled the law told you the two greatest commands that you need to live out and if you do those commands you will fulfill everything in the law you yourself cannot please God but only his spirit in you could you call upon to do the things that please God and even when you slip up and do something that's pleasing he is forgiving to you if you truly repent and turn away from that sin If we can do that, if we truly can accept God for his unconditional love, and we can fully say, God, Lord Jesus, you love me where I'm at, but I know you don't want me to stay here. But because you love me so much, Lord, I want to love you too. I want to learn to love you. He say, in your flesh you cannot love me. But my spirit can help you have a relationship with me. And as your love grows and you start to love God more and more, the sins and the things and the entanglements and the strongholds and the binds, they fall off of you. And you start to walk in the spirit and as you walk in the spirit and you're not lukewarm and you're on fire for God and you have zeal for God and you remain relatable you remain because God lets you God gives you an audience so you don't got to try to be relatable but when you start walking in the spirit and fulfilling the things of the spirit you begin to drop breadcrumbs that the dogs eat that eventually they want the whole loaf. I'm done.